Okay, guys, so I want to go over uh, example 5 from section 6.2 with you. We didn't quite get to do this in class. Um, and so it's a long calculator tutorial. I'm not going to read through all the steps on a note sheet. I'm just going to show you how to do it. And then if you have any questions, of course, you can read over the note sheet. Um, so the question here is use your calculator to graph a binomial distribution that shows the probability of exactly k successes in 15 trials if the probability of success p is 0.3 or 0.5 or 0.9 and then based on what your calculator shows you describe the shape of each distribution all right so we're going to go through the steps and at the end here we're going to answer the question what's the shape of the distribution in case a b and c okay and just so that you have this your note sheet has this information on it so if a distribution looks like this we call it uh, negatively skewed actually we most often just say left skewed left skewed and then this would be called a symmetric distribution this would be called right skewed and uh, normal and symmetric are not really the same thing so I usually make the kids ignore the normal part here uh, something can be symmetric and not be normal so <clears throat> in this case it looks fairly close to normal but um, I think just stick with symmetric at this point. We'll talk about normality next lesson. All right, so if we go here, uh, let me show you how to do this on your calculator. So I have a binomial experiment or a binomial setting, and there's 15 trials. This is the probability of success. So a few things you have to think about. Okay, so go to your calculator, and the place we do this on your calculator is go to uh, Stat, hit the Stat button, and then go to Edit, and hit Enter. And now you get uh, lists here that you can enter data into. Uh, we want to clear all this stuff out. So the way you do that is go up to the top where it says L1, and then hit Enter, <clears throat> and then hit Clear. And then hit Enter again. You'll see your whole list is empty now. And do the same for any of the lists, at least the first two lists. If you have list 1 and list 2, uh, go and just uh, clear those two out. So go up to L2, hit Enter, Clear, enter and so it looks like this okay now let's go back here and it says um, there's 15 trials and we want to make the probability distribution of the number of successes in the 15 trials so there's always one more option for the number of successes than there are trials so um, I can have first of all zero successes and then one and then two and then three successes and so on Okay, so you just keep going, but you'll notice that actually what that means is I'm going to have 16 options for successes uh, because zero is also an option. All right, and so when you're done with entering zero to 15 in here, you should see um, that you're actually, if you click on 15 here, you're actually in element 16 because there's 16 options. Okay, there's 16 options. And then the second part <clears throat> that's a bit more tricky is to get your calculator to calculate all these binomial probabilities. Now, you don't want to do this uh, like we did in the previous example where you do it all by hand. That'll take forever. Um, so the, fortunately, the calculator can do this for you. So all you have to do is go to a second and then vars, you were looking for distribution actually, so vars, and if you hit that button, you'll see a bunch of distribution options here, and we just hit the up arrow and go to binomial PDF, so binomial PDF, and hit enter, and now it'll ask you some information, how many trials, and you say there's 15 trials, and remember our first example, letter A, said that what uh, find the probability of k successes in 15 trials if the probability of success on each trial is 0.3 so we change that to 0.3 don't put anything for x value and just hit enter and so now what this is saying is in list 2 put the binomial distribution for 15 trials with 0.3 probability of success on each trial and if you hit enter it just fills everything in for you Okay, now one thing that's important to note for us to graph this is we're going to have to set our window size manually. 
<coughs> going to have to set our window size manually. So um, the thing to do here to help us do that is to look for the biggest probability number because that's going to be our y-axis maximum size that we want to use. So in this case, if I scroll through here, the biggest one I see here is 0.2186. And then as you go down, you'll see obviously it gets smaller again. So the biggest Y value that I need to have on my window size is 0.2186. So we'll make it like 0.22 or something like that. Okay. So that's basically you have the data now. Now we have to set up the calculator to graph the data. All right. So... Uh, to do that, you go second, and then y equals, but which actually means stat plot, stat plot, right? So second y equals, and then uh, enter on the first one there, and make sure this is on set to on, and then hit enter, okay? And then go down, and then go across to this thing that looks like a bar graph, but it's a histogram. Okay, remember, probability distributions are histograms, okay? So... Make sure you select that one, and then if you did what I did, uh, the X list, in other words, the X axis is going to be list one, and the frequency, and for us, the Y axis is going to be list two, the probabilities, which is exactly what we did in class together, okay? And so if you've done all this, uh, you're ready to graph it, we just have to set the window size. And so if you go to uh, window at this point, we have to change the window size. So I'm going to leave my x minute negative 1, uh, but my x max, there's 15 trials but 16 options. So my first option is going to be 0 all the way to 16. So at least make this 16, one more than your number of trials. Okay, And then for your y min, you can make that really small, like 0.1 or something. And then remember we looked earlier, my maximum y value was 0.2. 186. So we're going to make this just a little bit bigger than my maximum y value. So I'm going to make this point, let's say, 2, 3 or something like that. Okay, just a little bit bigger than my um, biggest probability value in my binomial distribution. And so once you've done this and you hit graph, you'll see the probability distribution. And you can see it looks like there's nothing going on over here, but actually there is stuff going on over there. If you hit trace, and then you start tracing through your distribution. You can see this is zero. That's the probability for zero successes out of 15 trials. One, two, three, and so on. Um, and if you keep going, you'll see that there's still data here. It's just very, very small bars, but there are bars. Okay. And so this is uh, 15 successes out of 15 trials. Uh, very, very small probability of that happening, which makes sense. All right, and so this is the distribution. And then the question was asking, um, describe the shape, right? Describe the shape. So if I look at these three pictures I had up here, uh, this would be right skewed because the tail is on the right. This would be left skewed because the tail is on the left. And this would be symmetric, okay? Because the tails are kind of the same on either side of the center. Uh, and most of the data is in the center here. So, any case, so uh, which shape would we go with here? Well, this has uh, most of the data on the left-hand side, and then it has a tail here going to the right. Okay, so when the tail is in the right, we call that right skewed. So for uh, letter A, you'd say, what's the shape of this distribution? It's right skewed. Okay, it's right skewed. All right, and now you have to do the same thing again, but for uh, if the probability of success is 0.5, not 0.3. And so this is not too much work. Uh, all you have to do is go back to uh, stat, go back to edit, and then we want to take this out. The number of trials are still the same, so list one doesn't have to change. But I have to clear this out, enter, clear, enter, and then go back up here hit enter, and then uh, go back to my distribution, but put a different binomial distribution in there. So now I just go second uh, distribution, go up, uh, go to binomial PDF again, PDF, not CDF, hit enter, still 15 trials, but now the probability of success is 0.5, 50% chance, and go to paste, all right, and hit enter, and there you go. 
Okay. Now again, scroll through here to see your biggest probability of success. Uh, getting bigger, 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 bigger. These two are the same. Then getting smaller, smaller, smaller. You can verify that. Okay. So my biggest probability of success is uh, 0.19 something, right? So you have to go adjust your window size again. You don't have to do the stat plot thing again because the stat plot is still on, right? So second stat plot, it's still on. All that stuff is set. List one and two is set. You don't have to change all this. Um, and so you just have to change the window size. So again, the X values remain the same. The number of trials remain the same, but the probability of success changed. So the biggest probability of success this time was 0.19 something. So if we just make this like 0.20, that'll be big enough for the Y axis. Uh, and then we can just hit graph. Okay. And now you see the distribution. You can trace that again. Uh, zero successes, one success, two, three, four, all the way up to uh, 15 successes. But you can see this looks very similar to uh, this distribution right here. And that's because it is. It's completely symmetric. Okay, so this is completely symmetric. So that's a very nice shape. We like to see that. Uh, and then you can do the same again for um, the third question, which is what happens when the probability of success is 0.9 with 15 trials. Uh, do the same thing. Everything stays the same. Just go stat edit, I go back up here, the number of trials is the same, so enter that, clear it out, and then go and put here um, second uh, distribution, or VARs, and then I want to do binomial PDF again, uh, 15 trials again, but this time 0.9 probability of success, uh, and hit paste, enter and now you get something very different uh, and you need to go find your biggest um, probability from that list and that is about 0.34 so 0.35 would be a big big enough value for my window size again uh, you don't have to go back to stat plot that's been set uh, just fix the window and all I have to do for the window here is to fix my biggest y value that's 0.39, so we can go to like 0.4 and then graph this. Uh, and you'll see this is the shape of the distribution, okay, with 15 trials and probability of success 0.9. So if I trace that, uh, you'll see there's data there. It's very, very small, but there's some data there, data, 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 and uh, so on, so on, so on. And so when I get to 15 trials, probability of 15 successes out of 15 trials is 0.2, okay? And so that's my binomial distribution there, and we would call this shape, uh, definitely there's a lot of data still down here in the tail, or a little bit of data, but there's still data in the tail, uh, carries on forever that way. We would call this, definitely looking at this picture, uh, left skewed, okay, left skewed, because the tail is on the left, right? And that's how you do that. I just want to point one thing out to you. If you having weird graphs show up here and everything over your graph, just remember that you can go into uh, y equals and clear all this out. So if you have graphs in here, they're going to graph on top of your histogram, which you don't want. So make sure you clear that out, and then uh, that'll fix uh, your graphs. Okay? And they should come out like this. All right, guys. Uh, lastly, if you have a TI-89 or TI-Inspire, there are tutorials from how to do that, text tutorials like this, written tutorials uh, on Schoology. All right, thank you.